and shocking And she looks like a star Yeah, she's got the style that makes you think she's made out of gold She says she likes it better when we go off-road yeah. I'm gonna make it worth your while I'm gonna make it worth your time I'm gonna make it worth your while When she's with me Windows roll down, radio on I think we could go far, we don't need money We can skip that part All I want is her to be with me She's got a ticket to my heart Got the sun in my eyes It can't get better than when she makes that smile Yeah, she's got that style that makes you think she's made out of gold She's turning up the volume on the radio yeah. I'm gonna make it worth your while I'm gonna make it worth your time I'm gonna make it worth your while Windows roll down, radio on I think we could go far, we don't need money We can skip that part All I want is her to be with me She's got a ticket to my heart She makes that smile, yeah, she's got that style that makes you think she's made out of gold She's turning up the volume on the radio yeah. Hello, everyone, welcome. Hi, Miriam. Hi. Hi, Diane, how are you? Oh, very good. Hi, and Hi Kim. Hi, Anina. Hi, Anina. Hi. Hi, Kim. Hi, Cool Gamer. Cool Gamer, hi. So today, the episode is about healing through art, understanding the inner critic. And yeah. 
it's following this book. It's from a chapter in this book, which is all about healing through art, which is uh, the author is Tamar Tamara Laporte. And the book is called Create Your Life Book. And it's uh, she made a she she offers online year long course called Life Book. And so she created a now she does that online. But here she created a book about this. So but, Sorry about that. But it's about um, healing through art and all the different ways you can heal through art. And we hope that you might follow along in the suggested materials. And you don't have to use all these materials, but I'll list off the suggested materials, which are acrylic markers, acrylic paint, water-soluble markers, colored pencils, gesso, graphite pencil and eraser, mixed media paper, collage items that represent freedom and transformation. Now, for me, I'm not using all those materials. I am. I used a graphite pencil already and an eraser, and um, and I am using water sol. I'm doing my techniques with water soluble markers today and collage. I will be using collage. So as you can see, I'm not even going to be using all those materials. But I will go over the way she uses those materials in this yes. book. Perfect. Yeah, and we put in our post the material so. If you mm -hmm. in the chat want to work with us, please. Yes, it's in the description box of, of my of my live stream. I also put it down in the description box. I didn't put it in my description box, but yeah. Okay. Sorry. I can tell what it is. Right. They're kind of basic materials, and you just use the materials that are convenient for you and that you prefer. You don't have to use these materials, as you can see. She used these water soluble crayons and she used acrylic paint and I, I will go over how she uses them, but okay. that's not, that's not what I'm choosing. To I do. have a lot of, I, I have everything that you put in the list. By the way, Anina said to forward you say hello. Yes. She says hello. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. And hi again to you, Anina. Uh, so I think it's, it's better if you tell us it is, and if you choose to do different, do different. I can do the same, and what, whoever is working with us, along us, could do the same. But we have the guide to to know what to do. Yes. At what point would you like to talk about your ca cartoon that you created? It's okay. About you can you can tell the uh, guidance, and in the meantime, that we are working, and you don't tell, you are not yeah. telling that. I can start to talk. Yes, Miriam has created. She's so creative. She had a few weeks ago. She started her own cartoon, which which is all about the inner critic. It's a it's a cartoon she created that talks talks back to the inner critic. It's so creative. Yes. But it's very active today, so I couldn't do more. <laughs> oh, your inner critic is very active today? Inner critic was very active, so every idea I had, he said, no, no, no. Do you think so? <laughs> oh, okay. I want to tell you, I want to, I want to give you some tips I've learned, not just from, well, from another book that an author that I like that I really, my favorite technique, my favorite technique for dealing with the inner critic, I'm going to share that. But okay, so she, perfect. she starts this chapter off with not about like every chapter starts off with the, the mental health aspect of this and, 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 and promoting yourself being your, your and promoting your well being through art and improving your mental health through art. And, she starts the these two pages are all, all about addressing your inner critic and kind of what's on the way she addresses this is she she starts off saying I'll, like, let me read this huh. of like what's underneath the inner critic so she starts off with ex exploration <laughs> consulting your inner critic yeah. sit down Take a moment and write a paragraph. Sorry. Okay. I need to address to my dog. I don't know. Hey, write a hey, paragraph of your inner critic's most common critiques in your 
in your paragraph. Select three. Select three of the most painful thoughts and work through them by answering these questions. And I just go over a little bit about this. She has lots of questions to answer to ask the inner critic. Like the inner, like for example, the inner critic might say, I don't like this painting. It's no good. It's not good enough and no one will like it. And then you ask yourself, what's under this statement? Which, which more, what, which more elaborate inner critic thought, thoughts live there? What feelings live there? Ow, my eyes are bothering me. Oh, so um, she and it's very extensive. It's very extensive. This whole page is all about that. Okay, but, but I, so I, I talk I, about I, it uh, between us because you don't need to read that. I think that we know enough because uh, I I want to share with you from another author my favorite technique for dealing with the inner critic. Okay. So it's from Elizabeth Gilbert from her book called Big Magic. And she's a writer that has to deal as a creative person. She's a writer and her create her creative thing is writing. And she herself has to deal with the inner critic all the time. And this is this is what she recommends. She says she actually writes a letter to the I mean, she lets the inner critic have have their have its voice like she'll write out she'll write it's and what and then she let she tells us that the inner critic is really trying to protect us in its own clumsy way the inner critic's trying to protect you from failure from disappointment so what she says is that you you let the inner critic tell you its fears and you'll see it's a very short list the fears that it has is a very short list and then uh, you say, okay, I've heard you, but and now she, she sees the inner critic as somebody that's always going to be along for the ride, like in her vehicle. Like there's the, there's, there's like, I don't know who the other people in the vehicle are that would be her vehicle. That, but but the the inner critic can never be in the driver's seat. So she, she her creative impulse could be in the driver's seat. She could be in the driver's seat. Her creativity could be in the driver's seat, but the inner critic can never be in the driver's seat. She will never allow the inner critic to, She'll, but the inner critic is always going to be there. So she lets the inner critic have its voice, but it can never, it can never drive the vehicle. It can never be in the driver's seat. So that's my favorite oh. technique. You can't make the inner critic go away. It's always going to be there. You just don't let it be. You let it have its voice, listen to its fears, and say, okay, I heard you. I understand. But we're going we're gonna to do this. We're going to do this anyway. We're going to do such and such, and we're going to do this. Okay. I'm not so... Uh, you have echo again? Or it's me? <laughs> echo? Echo. Okay, I'm not so agree with that mm -hmm. completely. I, I I'm not agreeing completely with that, oh. but we are going to talk about it if the <laughs> I mean I have the the cars already. <laughs> so are you saying I'm echoing? I think it's you. I don't know. Then I let me I check hope if my everything how it need to be. Then uh, I have to check if my earbud is connected. But it's not all the time, so maybe it's. I need to check if my earbud is connected. Hold on. Okay. This is good. Do you want me to talk so you can? Yes. Yeah. Could you please talk? Okay, I'm talking. You can talk about your talk. comic strip, your cartoon, The Inner Critic. Okay, I can I can talk about it a little bit. So I made, you know, I work by impulse. So in that sense, I agree with your author that 
I let my impulse, my arts impulse, to a creative impulse to, to lead. Okay. So sometimes I do things and I don't know where they are going to um, end. But sometimes, no, sometimes I have a clear vision. And sometimes, even though I have a clear vision, things could uh, have an unexpected ending or, or turn. But uh, I was like, I recognized the inner critic as the voice of the many critics that I had all my life. Uh, I meant critics of uh, important person for me, significant person for me. But I don't think the inner critic is bad. And let me tell you why. Well, I, I, I am uh, in a tangent. I, I don't, yeah, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know how to fix this at, at it. I just don't know okay. how to fix I don't know how to fix this echo. I can't, you, I can't move this. I'm sorry. I don't. Is it really it's bothering okay. you? No, it's okay. It's not so bad. And it's does, uh, the, does the people, do the audience hear the this echo? They said that it was echoing and then was better because I think it's something that it's not happening all the time. But you have one camera less. Do you know sir, that? Your face camera, it's out. Oh, well, then that's. In that's the meantime, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Well, I don't don't know. worry. I, I can only connect no this. No, I don't know how to pick something that. in the middle of a stream. I don't know no how to do that. anymore. It was for some seconds. So don't worry about that. Fix okay, I'll add camera. myself back to the stream. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to tell about my comics. So I started to do my comics thinking about the inner critic that everyone has. And to represent him as a character that don't go away and uh, that always have something to say. So I think the critic is the part that save us from mistakes or, or need to be. The inner critic need to be our mirror. Like we we have a mirror because we cannot see ourselves. We need a mirror physically. That happened. I cannot see myself without a reflective uh, surface. But we depend mm -hmm. on how we take it. Could be the inner critic meaning something to stop us or could be the observer that could say the same things but we take it as it is so i think there is a mirror in front of us and could be either of them and maybe some more that i will go to discover through time so for now, I have two characters plus me <laughs> that are my inner critic and my observer. And uh, they are useful, both of them. The thing is that, as she said, and in that I agree, you don't need to let them lead. Even the observer can observe something, you pay attention to this, and you decide what to do. When the inner critic or, or yourself sees that thing, that observation, like could be that this observation, it's uh, really near to some trauma that you have when you were a kid, 
could be this observation something that it's a taboo in the society so you don't want to accept it so that becomes your inner critic that stops you it's like take the the will <laughs> so you cannot do whatever your impulse says yes that's when the inner critic when the inner critic gets out of control and gets in the driver's seat is not the good thing yeah yeah but it happens it happens to all of us it happened to me today something that i i think it represents it having a yeah, it happened, it happened a to me right now with its earphones i'm about to cry no 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 don't do it it's okay so everything is and if there is echo you are going to art and i am going to talk okay <laughs> so i think it's time could you say the inner critic is a guy says eddie it's a it's a guide yes it could be a guide eddie it's a guide if become the observer because i think the two of them are the same are like two sides of a coin and depend of you which side you are going to have when i was little I read a lot of literature for kids, but like novels or something like that, not a kiddie things like uh, now. And one of them talk about a girl that fell off of the col column, like uh, El Columpio, La Maca, Eddie, you can tell me. Uh, Anina says the inner critic is nothing positive for me. Yes, I understand and I agree. But in that, in this book, the the character, the, the kid, fell off from hammock, a, a hammock. A hammock, yes. And she get paralyzed. So she was in bed. She didn't want to na nothing to bother. She was uh, depressed. And the sister sat beside her and said, you need to take the things for the good on them. Like if you need to open a door, and it seems that to open the door, the thing we have, it was smooth, uh, in other, in one side, like the upper side, like you need to to touch, and it was rough on the other side. So she she told her, "You try to open with the hand like that, and you need to put your hand like this." So of course it was meant to the healing, to the healing of the soul. That is the first. So let's say that I have my white uh, shit. Shit, no, sheet of paper. And I don't want, no, I know what to do. And immediately, because I said, I don't know what to do, there is panic. This is the inner critic. You never know what to do. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. why bother? What are you what you are doing going to do is not worth it. Now, let's take the same phrase. Yes, you never know what to do. And if you accept that as an observation, first of all, you are going to feel well and not bad. Second, it's your opportunity to say, oh, that's right. When I have a blank canvas in front of me, I don't know what to do. So let's find solutions to that. Let's put something on it. Oh, I have an idea now. 
that could be one solution. So you put your hand like this, instead like this. Whatever he said, anyway, don't bother. And I can say, yes, I don't need to bother for that. I accept your observation, thank you. I don't need to bother because I am going to find the solution. And anyway, it was, it is not going to be worth it or it's not worth it. Yes, you are right. Not worth it to be so, so um, preoccupied about this. I only needed to put something on the, on, on the page or to grab some materials and say, oh, what I am going to use today? Oh, I have options. Wow, oh, I remember a technique. Yes, with these aquarelle markers, I can do it. And maybe I can use the color combo. I don't know, whatever. I try to be very graphic because it's an innovative idea. It's not, uh, we think that everything is separate. The inner critic is outside and it's telling me, no, it's in, in you, in you. So, swings, said Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Yes, swings. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, positive or negative, everything is inside you. And you need to use them. Let's say that I want to do something. But really, it's only my first idea. And I don't know if that will be real, really something good. Or I do something and I don't know. I say, oh, that I, I don't feel it. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's a positive way to, um, to do it. Because the inner critic said you something and you pay attention and you accept it in a good way. That is healing. Well, if the if that's if the inner critic says something that's productive, like constructive, like when the, when the inner critic just says, "Oh, that's not good enough," you're yes. you're not good enough. That that's when you want, want to yes. get behind the fear. What's, what's behind no. that? What's the fear behind that? The inner critic is trying to that the crit, inner critic has. Okay, so let me take the your words. Okay, this is not good enough. Yeah. I am not good enough. You know what I did when it was uh, Inktober? I did not only what it says in the words, but I choose something extra, like do in the style of the painters, that I a list of painters for every day one painter. I detect Thank to the inner critic that I have limitations. And I wanted to better myself. So yes, I'm not good enough. Anyone is good enough. Or do you think that you are? No. We are not good enough because the perfection, it's only a horizon line to continue walking is not that we, ah, I'm perfect. Even the great painters were perfect, were not perfect. So I, I hope I can reach you and everyone with the message because for me it's very important. That's why I decide to do the comic because I can put all that ideas slowly <laughs> So no one will have fear, as you mentioned, fear. Yes, so, the inner critic is is based on fear and trying to no. prevent you, trying to prevent you from um, 
getting disappointed or have failures. Okay. Prevent you to be disappointed or yeah. have failures. Could be, and it's good because you can change what you are doing every time. You, you, you don't do like that. That's it. I finished. No, you need to work your art. And uh, I know because all of what are here, I mean, uh, and uh, Kim and Eddie and Tammy. Oh, Paul is here. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hi, Paul. <laughs> he said, Tick, get out of my head. <laughs> it's he not said, what? That. <sighs> so I think it's important. There is a concept of the inner critic. And I think that it, it is when our observations or what we see in the mirror don't reflect what we think about ourselves. It's something unexpected. Oh, no. Why? I am the best. I, I, my drawings are perfect. Uh, if, if I don't not convince, let's put it on Facebook. I will have 20, 30 or whatever like him. Uh, so are you saying the inner critic, one, uh, one function of the inner critic is to prevent you from prevent you from thinking that your stuff is better than it is? No. The, feel that you are the best oh, and you have right. nothing to learn. Oh, okay, yeah. Is the problem. Everything you said, I said to me without problems, but when you don't accept that, so what happened? Something inside reject that idea. When you reject the idea, how can you reject something that it's only an observation with fear with it it goes to to your fear it goes to to whatever it's a, it's like a spring that you push and the spring push back that's what happened so i'm not a psychologist i only observe myself and try to be the more truthful with myself that I can be. And sometimes being truthful with yourself is to accept things that they are not so well, see, well seen uh, like, or accepted by others. And... Okay. That's why if you see your art after a while, it's better than in the, the, the moment that you are doing it. Because in the moment that you are doing it, you pour your soul and everything goes out without barriers. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's um, part of the creative process of where you can, where where you let intuitively just let it like play like a child let it come out and then you can then you can step back with an editing eye afterwards after you've played yes. and let it come out you can step back later later after a while come back with an editing eye yes and we are like a, an onion we have layers so sometimes when i do digital art i start to do like rum, 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 rum whatever and then i put an eye layer and i start to to play with whatever i doodle like that and then i put another layer it's like refine 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 yeah because uh, art uh, expression it's a pure expression as i see it okay i see it as a pure expression I will grab something and I will put it in, in, in without knowing why. And then 
when I see something that it's not so acceptable, that it's when I say to the inner critic, come on, I need you. Please make me feel bad. Make you feel bad? Yes. Yes, because in the arting moment, you cannot, uh, I, I don't know how to express that, sorry, but well, I, I think, think that, I, understand, I understand in my own way what you're saying. I think I understand I, what I just said about you let, you play, you let it out, you be creative, you and you don't let yeah. the inner critic be there. But then after a while, after a few hours, after a few days, then you can come back with an editing eye and the inner critic can help out. Yes, but I, I say the opposite thing, is that the inner critic, uh, it's uh, sprung out <laughs> in the moment and that you are creating without thinking about it. That's why I said, make me feel bad. Because I cannot think at the same time that I am creating. It's like, if you yes, have- I get it, you can't post. edit. Right, you can't yes. think critically. You cannot think critically the same time that you're creating. It has yes. two separate yes. processes. Let's say ideally, because the first time we did a, a drawing, okay, let's see. Paul Pate said, I'm like a head of lettuce, more leafy than an onion. <laughs> okay, more leafy. Okay, for you. And Anina said, some part of what you share sound also like self conscious Okay, what, what you said, I cannot read it this word. <laughs> Consciousness? Yes, yes. I shared with you already what uh, I think Socrates said, that nothing of the human is strange to me. Nothing human, human is strange to me. We have inside everything. Only that sometimes we go and we experience things and those things mold how we treat the aspect of us. So when we don't accept, we treat them bad. It's like they, they yell, hi, or they talk to you, hi. It's my turn. You need to put something because it's cold. And I, I, I don't hear, and I still, without a sweater, so they said a little bit more higher. Hi, you hear me? You need to put this weather. So I said, no, 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 I don't hear you. I, I ignore you. So when they need to yell at us is when we have the inner critic. Instead of said, after a while, if they, instead of said, hey, put this weather, they said, no, you don't hear me. You never hear me. <laughs> and so on. So that's the inner critic. Instead of that, let's accept the observation of ourselves. And let's try to put on this phrase a better, the better explanation or that it is. That's it. I want to add something. <laughs> Let me know what we are doing. Okay. We, we can go on to the next. Thank you for sharing your unique views on the inner critic. And, and I have a different, I have some different views on the inner critic, what I express. So I think everybody can deal with the inner critic, you know, take in their, I, I learned something from Miriam, but to add to what I think. But I pretty much stick to what I think. But I, I learned okay. something from Miriam that kind of um, that I didn't hadn't thought about regarding the inner critic. So that was that was interesting. So yes, from the book, it's the title of this chapter of understanding the inner critic is that it's called. Just a minute. 
is you're going to create an art page. It's called You Have Wings. So let's see what it, she says about this. You Have Wings. Uh, we will create a front-facing portrait of a girl with wings, a little bird or owl and butterflies around her head, symbolizing the transformation of the inner critic's thoughts of, or feelings positive com into positive well, the transformation of the inner critics thoughts to feelings positive compassionate thoughts the bird the bird represents wisdom and compassion for for me choose choose symbolisms that meet that are meaningful to you and that's the finished prod that's the finished thing of what this artist created she had the girl create have wings and butterflies and and for me i'm going to add flowers too because flowers are symbols of transformation so of course you create the face you want uh, here she's she's creating like one of those faces where the it's a big head kind of cartoon kind of thing and how she's done it in pencil first i did my step already with pencil I drew out the face with pencil first. You might want to do it with the big head and the small little skinny neck kind of style if you want. I did not. Yeah, I, did, I, I did already it. started and I don't yeah. know what I'm doing, but I, it's not like that. I did a more representational face rather than the, this cartoon face that this artist does. So she drew draws it in pencil first. And then the her technique is that then she uses water soluble crayons for the flesh tone whatever skin tone you want and and then she describes her process of how she uses the water soluble crayons with the acrylic then she then she does a layer of acrylic on top um on top of the water soluble crayons she adds de details I get she's drawing her whole composition out right here with the, the birds and butterflies around the figure. Okay. So I, I didn't want to get into all, her process so much as showing you what she just sharing with you what she does and give and just saying, I guess the inspiration is creating a fig. A, a figure with wings and symbolism of freedom and things that symbolize freedom and transformation because her idea is trying to transform the inner critic into something more positive and that you can grow from the inner critic like Miriam's saying the inner critic helps you grow yeah at least so which could be part of that. transformation which could be part of transformation yes go uh, go ahead get what we're saying Good. Uh, at least is, is what I think. Let's see. We have uh, no. We don't have more in the chat. Let's represent the wings. Weird wings, but wings. <laughs> yes, I didn't leave enough room for the wings because I actually just noticed that it's about wings today. Somehow I had missed that in the reading that this is about adding wings to the figure. So I squeezed in some wings there. Yeah. Hi, Pat. Welcome. I knew because you told us but i didn't do it okay let's start let's put some water here and let's start with the skin tone which i don't know if i have i'm making my skin tone lavender purplish Oh, that's a great idea. Let's do it. I think this one is so ruined that I am going to have a 
Yep, pim, pim, pam, pam, pam. So let's see. Have any thought of outer critics? Yes, I have. <laughs> How did you know? Well, I, I actually, get, I work with a critic every week. I, I actually get my work critiqued every week and it's helped me grow as an artist. Oh, that's a good thing then. Um, I think that the inner critic, sorry, I need to, oh. the, not the inner critic, sorry. The outer critics only touch us if we let them. And it can and be when, constructive. It could be positive or negative critiques. Yes, the same. So the I think the I was I I I thought about that once as if we have um, a goal uh, uh, and uh, like a, a place where you can put the 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 ball and make a goal and you are the defense. And when things get in, if they are things that are aligned with your inner critic or with your fears or with your taboos or with your traumas, so the, the ball gets in. And that start to, to bounce inside you touching everything every trauma every problem and you start is what we call to go down to the rabbit hole right but if you accept that the other one it's another and could have an opinion and sometimes that's op this opinion could be useful and sometimes it's not, so you say thank you for your thought, and you don't let the ball get in, the ball bounce outside and not bother you anymore. So that's my thought. Well, I work with an outer critic every week. I get critiques by another artist every week on my work, and it's really helped me grow as an artist. Because you and, accept and that, that. Most of the time I agree with his, his critiques, but other times, just every now and then, I'm like, I don't think so. I don't agree yeah. with that. <laughs> but most yeah. of the time I agree with his critiques. And then I and then I it strengthens my artwork. And you are entitled because if even if he had more uh, knowledge than you, okay. That's why he is your critic because he has more knowledge. You could not be in the moment that you can accept and use that. And could be that uh, along the way you will find that really useful and then you are going to to use it like sometimes i have things that my mother said to me or my father said to me or the, the, the masters i have said to me or and no matter no not matter who and i don't i cannot uh, think positively about that and use it until a lot of years I have passed because I wasn't there when she observed what she observed and sometimes never will be in the same wave length wave that I am and sometimes yes so 
We don't know that. But if we say thank you, I will put it in some place so that I can use it afterwards. And that's it. There are people that are really pushy, let's say. They, they, they not only think something, but they insist and insist and insist. Like they want to control you. And I don't let them. Because if what they say seems to me okay, so I accept it and thank you. But if not, I accept it too <laughs> as something that it's from other people, not from me. I am more willing to accept the inner critic than the outer critic. Mm -hmm. I think we need to talk about one word that it's common, that it's critique. What is a critique? Well, Someone have access to a dictionary now, so I, I, I don't need to take out or use one of my devices. It will be very interesting to I know. I can look it up. You want to know the definition for critique? Yes, from the dictionary. Okay, I can look it up. In my opinion, it's just one person's opinion. And whether if you value that person's opinion or not, it depends if you value that person's opinion, whether okay. you want to take their critique, if you want to take that in and and use it to use it in your work or not so for because because a critique is to improve your work so if you value somebody's opinion and you think oh their critique i think i'm gonna i'm gonna take that in and take and take and use that what they've said because i think it would improve my work that's what the whole point of a critique is is to improve your work yeah. okay i'm looking it up look at and i'm i'm going to tell something of someone that okay owns. here it is here it is okay. okay a detailed analysis and assessment of something especially a, a literary philosophical or political theory but we have to add art we have to add art to that okay um, so I say the verb, i'm not done the verb is evaluate a theory or practice in a detailed and an analytic way the the authors critique the the methods and practices used in the research that's in it okay i'm i'm done thank you that's all i want to hear again the first part okay first part. well it's a noun and a verb so the noun a detailed analysis and assessment of something and then okay. the verb is to evaluate a theory or a practice in a detailed and analytic way. So something of, of that, it's bad? I don't no, think so. I don't think so. No, what's bad is if you don't value the person's opinion. Like if you, if you don't think, I mean, if you don't value, that's not even bad. You can decide whether you value that person's critique or not. What, I mean, yeah. Whether you think it would be helpful for your artwork or not. Yes. Anina says, even people are challenged with a feedback. People think they can give always one, not only if you ask for it. Yes, that's correct too. So, Let's say that the other critique us. So it's doing an analysis of something of some aspect of us. Of us. The thing is, do, did you ask for that analysis? And if you ask for that, you ask for analysis or you ask for an attack? 
So I think that we, when we said he critiqued me, it's not a good use of the word because we think critique is to say bad things about whatever. Oh, well, I'm used to, I grew up going to art school and critique was the word you used. Like you get a weekly critique of your work. Every critique is not a bad thing. It's like you get a critique, everybody gets a critique of their work and all that. And so I grew up in art school where they use the word critique in, in, in a good, in, you know, a good way. It's about, it's a, it's a way to improve your work. Yeah. So I don't think it's bad. But let's say that some people can be pretty mean. Like we've had, I've had professor, I've had a professor one time and he was so harsh. His critiques were so harsh. Every, most people did not like his critiques. So you, I think you can, uh, separate the critique and the way that is said yes let's say that something said oh that's really not a believable believable uh color of face okay or and i said yes you are right you know, now that I see it, really it's unbelievable. And the other one can say, I cannot understand why you always put something so bad there. <laughs> That's not a critique. That's an attack. So right. I think that first we need to do the difference when your inner critic or when your self-conscience attacks yourself like pinch in one of your traumas because knows that that will trigger you that will trigger you yes that will trigger you that you make you hear it's because you don't hear yourself enough At least that's what I think. And what says Nina, it's very important. Some people think that they are entitled to put a magnifying glass on ourselves or, or on others and uh, said what they want and what they see. So do that with your own life. Be and ask permission. Ask permission if you're going to critique somebody. Would you Would you like to hear my opinion? You ask them ahead of time. Yes, I I wanted to to, to tell something. I did a a drawing, a digital drawing of myself, and I was very pleased. But I could see that it wasn't at the level I wanted to be. So instead of being mean with me and said the same thing, but with, in a mean uh, way, I went, I, I wrote to Christopher uh, Ranciman, if, if you don't know him, it's Christopher Ranciman, and you can look for him. It's, it's streaming right now. I, I don't know because he changed the, the, the days. I don't know if just now. But he's very good drawing. So I said to him, can you give me pointers how I can improve that? And he answered me, do you really want my critique? And I said, yes. Because sometimes we say things that uh, in the surface, like superficial things. Yeah. Okay. But he wanted to be sure that it's what I asked him for. And he gave me 
an advice, the how to improve it, that I don't know how to manage. So I said, thank you so much, but I didn't use it. So that's an example that some one critic, it's something that you can think because I know, I'm sure that down the road, I will be prepared to follow that and to do that. And if he never will would say that to me, I won't have the opportunity even in the future. And now I have an opportunity. So that's for me, it's very, very important. So I want to hear more of the chat. So how they see all of that. Yes, tell us in the chat, how do you feel about the inner and the outer critics? I love these. These are like uh, crayons, but you can manage them with water or without water. And I have them for many, many years, and it was the most cheap <laughs> crayons or, or even art supply that I could find. So let's see if we have, oh. Some opinions. Everybody's just saying hello to each other in the chat. Oh. Oh. Part. Oh, wait a minute. Part sound. Oh, Anina said the part sounds for me like self consciousness. Oh, she said that in your yes. chat too. Yes. Yes. You have the two of the chats. I have only one. So yeah, I think I'm, not probably, looking at, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at that. I'm not looking at the universal whatever. I no, okay, okay. So, they they bounce back, 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 back and forth between your chat okay. and my chat. Yeah. Uh, Paul finished his book, his third book. So I need to congratulate you, Paul. You mean reading a book or what? What are you talking about? No, he's he was drawing and written, writing a comic book. Oh, that is that that's not Paul's blind are you, that's not Paul's blind suit for the soul, is it? No, it's Paul Pate. Oh, okay. Oh hi Paul. And he is fantastic. At least for me. I don't know for him. <laughs> himself <laughs> well do you yeah. want to tell us more about the, your cartoon the inner critic oh yeah I want to so I had a lot of ideas the thing is that I have ideas at night and I don't have where to write them because <laughs> I'm so, so sleepy at the time that I cannot open my eyes. But I have ideas as how to start with them because I don't want that to be something so evident, you know. But, yeah, I think that uh, the interaction with them bring me healing too. Everything that I said today is something that I uh, arrived to the conclusion being really accepting and observe myself as if I was outside of me. Like 
Paul talked about the outer critic. So let's say that the observer, it's like an outer critic. What is the difference between your own critic and the others? Or your own critique and the others' critique? Oh, the difference is that the outer critic um, is gives me more an objective eye. The outer critic sees things I didn't see that because I I get a weekly critique on my artwork and and I um, that, that he he sees things that I didn't notice in my work. Okay, why to help me? So why that happened? Do you know? why yes because why they would see something in the work i didn't see they're yeah. just another set of eyes it's just another set of eyes different opinion the person coming from a different time different place that sees things in your work that you didn't see but your work is the same it's another person right it's, it's, it's subjective how somebody sees it subjective ah -ha. so First of all, if your work is subjective, that means that any critique, bad critique that you can do, even the good critiques, are subject to yes. your history. Okay? So what happened is that the other person don't have your same attachments or detachment to different things. Let's say that I do a, a cone of ice cream. That was my work. And something came and made a critique about it. But let's say that I associate inside of me the ice cream with a bad experience or not the ice cream but the cold or he said oh i see that the colors are in dissonance or it's not a good composition i know many people defy the rules of composition in their art i know that many people have doing art with colors that they are not go one with the other. And the art is beautiful at the end because they were free. They didn't have attachment to any of the things that are component of the art or they managed to not let that things to go in the way yeah and beauty's in the eye of the beholder that's subjective too so one yes. thing that somebody thinks is beautiful somebody else does not think is beautiful of course of course so let's do them Oh, oh, sorry, I'm doing... Can talk about your cartoon? Okay, more about my cartoon. The cartoon uh, of the inner critic, everybody. Yeah. Yes, I know, I know. Uh, people always ask me, uh, why are they men? Men and not women. Oh. And the first one, I didn't think about it, really. But the second one, I made like, a, I, I defied that critique <laughs> or that observation. And I made another man and I put, yes, it is a man too. <laughs> so, because for me, it wasn't important 
this. It wasn't important. I, I didn't think about it. So it's not that I create it a man because I had an ulterior motive. For me, it's what I don't draw. The drawing, they go outside. <laughs> you see? I, that That is how I see the art. That uh, it's a consequence of you. It's not you putting something. When you put something, so it's the time that really you, you see, oh, okay, it's not... It's not a good work of art because you put something on purpose. So I think we are in a journey, okay? So our journey is a journey of discovering, a journey of um, like you don't know and you need to know and to know you experience and then you are going to have, because the knowledge is a multi-level thing. So maybe you accept that knowledge and you accept one part or the part that you see in the surface, but it's like an iceberg. It has a lot inside. So you need to discover, and you are going to discover all the labels of the knowledge as soon as you are ready for every one of them so for instance uh, I might I sometimes see in myself in my work something that my father told me long time ago and i don't know if i accept that or no or i was prepared or no but suddenly i see myself doing it without uh, thinking about it then i recognize the thing that i did so that worked for me like that because i have a mind that uh, accept the knowledge without uh, asking, without uh, resistance. That's why I never needed to learn, to go to learn uh, especially because one time it's enough. Okay. <laughs> and my comic will be my thoughts in the making, like it will be entertained, I think. It's not that you need to think hard, <laughs> but you could if you have, if you want. Okay. I think the basic is already there. Let's use one more color. So, how is so far for you? So savage. Too savage, would I say? Makes sense? <laughs> no? Yes? I put the stream and I went to my kitchen to make a coffee. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> oh, you're yeah. asking your chat? Yeah. But uh, let's see, just the other doesn't know what is positive for you sometimes, said Anina. I like your inner critics comics. Yes, thank you. You see? I like my girl. Okay. 
let's see what I am going to put in the background. Oh, oh, what color? I think the only one I could put is this. I am going to use markers after that because this is to lay the color only. So uh, I need also the collage to add. You know, I have many ideas, but only when I put them out, I can learn. So I so think when I you put them out, you can what? Learn? Learn, yes. Inside, I cannot see them. I need to put oh, them outside. Yes. So sometimes it's the critic who critique me or uh, do said what it, what it is. But sometimes, like now that I am talking about something, I learn new things and I learn from others, not from me only. I incorporate whatever you say, whatever they say in the chat, and I incorporate as another point of view. I think that whenever we are going to have the complete picture of us that will be the sum of our life yes so why art my point of view art help you because it's a uh, uncensored voice Even if you struggle and do something and say, oh no, this something that you did is inside you. And the oh no is the oh, I love your drawing with their stones. Love it and the contrast. So that was for you. It's not part of the <laughs> explanation. <laughs> so what do I have? I have a corpse, a mummy. I have birds. Yes, Anina. But um, but today we are particularly using flowers and butterflies for symbols of transformation and freedom. That that we're typically that we are supposed to be using symbols of transformation and freedom. That's why particularly I'm used specifically, I'm using flowers and butterflies and or birds today. But yes, that's true in my artwork. A lot of times I do use flower, a lot of times I use flowers and sometimes I use butterflies and often use birds, yes. But specifically today. Thank you, Anina, thank you. I found this. But actually the six things that I'm offering in my art auction for April, I don't think anything has any butterflies in it at all. Oh yes, the one piece has butterflies. One, one of my things has butterflies in it, one. Oh yes. And about transformation or metamorphosis, metamorphosis, the butterfly is uh, like the ideal one for that because they have a metamorphosis in their lives from all the things I have I think I am going to use the flowers of this and these hands because it represents everything. It represents the person and it represents the bird. And because they are two different hands, 
represent the union or the the other as uh, contributors to our metamorphosis. Wow, all of that. I just put the link in my chat about please join my April art auction. Most art, it's all fine art prints and and handcrafted wood reproductions. And um, all my offerings are going to be under $70 with three prints available per, per artwork. Oh, great. That's a, that's a, that's a great deal to, to be able to buy fine art prints because it's a, it, I mean, it's less expensive than buying original art. Of course. Well, of course my digital art can't be made any other way. It has to be a, a fine art print. It can't be, it's, it's can't be realized any other way. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we have a, a swap collab this month, and I am going to do it with Tammy, and uh, she is in the chat now. And uh, we decide to do the swap digitally because of- Oh, the that's interesting. How are you going to do it digitally? Every one of us, uh, that was the first idea. I need to talk with her today. But uh, the idea is that we do something, preferably with uh, our hands in, in materials, and then we take a picture or scan it and pass it to the other one. And then the other one take it in Procreate as a base and do something else. So I don't want to talk about details because there are other people and I want to surprise everyone with my partner. But uh, that's the idea because if we need to share that, we are going to share that digitally anyway. We are not going to, to, to go house by house and let them see that <laughs> in the flash. So I think, don't mind if you do it, you resolve it digitally. I'm not so convinced like that. Yes, in the chat, please tell us, please tell me what you think, tell us what you think about the inner and outer critics. What are you, what's your viewpoint? Something like that, like this. Yeah, I think so. Let's see if I have something else. Nope. Nope. I have leaves. I can put some leaves as a symbol of transformation. Yes, you can. <laughs> I think that also sometimes we seek for opinion of others, we not what? professionally. What, what's the word? We, we what? Speak, 
seek for opinions. That we are looking for them? Yes. Yes. Maybe we don't trust in ourselves enough. I see that seeking for help. No, I not. think a critic is important for me. I need weekly critiques on my work. That's it's, okay. really helped me grow. it's really helped me grow as an artist compared to just me looking at my own artwork and trying to and trying to figure out how to go go further with it. I I found that I find the critique so I essential. Okay, I understand. But don't you think that it's like a shortcut? Shortcut? Yeah. What's wrong? I don't know. Yes, about and shortcut. I don't mean that. And I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean it that we are going to do whatever learning that we need in our lives. And the learning will come to us. Could be because you practice a lot, because you or it can come through the, somebody. Like you're saying, oh, if it comes through somebody else, that, that that's that's yes. not as good as it coming through yourself. No, yes, but for instance, I asked uh, an opinion to Christopher because I wasn't sure about something, but I wasn't ready for the answer because if I were ready, I would uh, have that, like I would take from others what they say and know direct to me. I'm not talking to you now. I am talking in general what is my opinion on my learning. Yeah, yeah. Life. So you can take that as, oh, Yes, I I never thought about it, but I'm not talking to Dan to uh, Dana. I'm talking to Diane. Sorry, I'm talking about me. Okay. So, what I did with Christopher seeking an advice, I see that as a shortcut. You see, not that it's bad. It's different. I don't so agree. I, don't, I think you may never have come when, when you get another set of eyes on something, you may never have come to that. You may never yes. have come to that without a set a, another set of eyes with a set with other opinion, with a second okay. opinion. Okay, but do I, I am I prepared for that? Oh, I guess that's up to you whether you're prepared for it. I think that when you are prepared for a learning or for a knowledge. You are going to find it. And I think it is going to be something uh, like, I, I don't know how to express myself. I don't want to hurt you anyway. I know that you are seeking the advice of someone. Yeah, and I'm and not sure about my artwork. I know you're not talking about me, but I will admit to you, I'm not sure about my artwork and I want I want second opinions. I do want second opinions. I know, I know. And it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do some uh, noise that uh, StreamYard is going to mute. I hope. Anina, with fine art prints, though, I bet it could be in anybody's budget because it's gonna, it's going to be like even under sixty dollars. It's like very, it's very inexpensive for art when you get for these fine art prints that um, most that I'm offering at least. It's it's like, I think it's in anybody's budget as opposed to original art, which yeah, it's like a hundred, a couple, a hundred or two hundred dollars, yeah, which may not be in everybody's budget. But the fine art prints, you should definitely check them out. Because you'd be surprised. It could be in your budget. It, it could very well be in your budget. 
everything you said, I, I couldn't hear. I, but I was sorry. talking to Anina. Ah, perfect. <laughs> then perfect. <laughs> I, I was afraid I am not in you. So I am continuing a little bit more because I need that to be dry. Yes, Anina, go ahead and join because go ahead and join the art, art auction group and you, you may be pleasantly surprised that these fine art prints are with it because this month is all fine art prints as opposed to next month, which will be original art and some art prints. But this month is all strictly art prints and hand handcrafted wooden reproductions. And you just may you may be ple pleasantly surprised that it could be in your budget. So, yes, definitely join the art auction group. The prices aren't being listed now. The prices will be listed April 13th to the 17th. But I'm just telling you. My work is going to be under 60 and 70 dollars under that. Oh, but oh, that's right. And Nina lives in the Netherlands. Oh, yeah, because this, this month I'm not shipping to um international but other artists may be chipping in we have international artists i have in, artists from india in the show artists from um finland in the show so it's not it's it's not just me but mo most artists will be shipping international I remember one phrase and I'm not sure about it critic eye critical eye well I know it as a critic eye critics I've, I've heard of critical eye I don't know about the critic the critics eye what is a critic eye a critical eye is like taking an editing view of your work with a critical eye. With a critical eye, you're taking it, you're, you're going to look at your artwork and now be in the editing process of it instead of the creating, instead of like the full, the creating where it's spontaneous and, and playful creating. Then, you, then the other part of the creative process is the editing process where you take a critical eye, a critical eye at your work and do editing. Yes. So... I think that is different as a critic, but use the same. It uses the critic and uh, as you say, editing, it's like thought. It's like put the thought in what are you doing and what are the? Um, yes, and whether you think the artwork is working or not. Like, do you think it's work? You're trying to edit it because you want the artwork to work, to be harmonious and work. Yes, yes. I think there are different. Uh, I like your critical. I think there are different personalities who needs for growth. Different. Hi, things. Jordan. Nothing better one or the other. Yes, yes, I agree with you. Totally agree with you. So I am using now uh, water. Carioca Aquarelle. It's watercolor felt tip pen. Uh, we have a question. We have a question from Jordan. Okay. He, Jordan wants to know how did how did it make a difference like when you what goes through your head when she is creating an art piece and the same with you what goes through your mind when you when you gonna create during our creating pro you mean our creative process is that I I try to create I try to create spontaneously and without and playfully and then 
for a period of time. And then after a few hours or a few days, I, I come back with an editing eye and try to, and, and try to look at my work, but I should work more like that. Instead, I actually have the creative process going and I, I'm actually looking at it and editing at the same time. It's maybe a bad habit. I'm actually looking and editing at the same time where I should probably create more f freely at first. I, yeah, I do create, I mean, some paintings I do that I create freely and then, and then I take an editing eye pretty quickly, pretty quickly. Maybe I should give it more time in the playful creative process part of it and not mm -hmm. look at it in the, with the editing critical eye so soon. Yeah. I, it's mixed. I am a human being, so I have the same as anyone's have. Uh, the same fears, the same uh, urges, whatever. But I try, I really try hard to enjoy my art. To and it's not something that I need to think to to do it. Like I really enjoy. Every time I do something and at night I have a lot of ideas. And uh, really, is I it cannot... nighttime? Nighttime is when yes. you get a lot of ideas. Yes, yes. Sorry, I need a lot of drying today. But yes, I am. Um... And I cannot do it, but I don't mind because I know that sometimes the ideas are the first layer. And I am sure that I am going to transmit the same thing in a better way even if I let that think. Think with S, not with TH. I'll be, I'll be back. I, I'm listening. I'm listening, but I have to take my microphone off because I, I have to look for my butterfly stickers. Okay. Okay. So the microphone is mine. <laughs> yeah. So I lost one of my brushes. Let's use the other one. Oh, this is better. So, we talk about a lot about the inner critic, but we didn't talk about the healing so much. So, I think the healing process is something so inherent to art. It gives us a purpose. It gives us a voice. And it gives us a voice that not necessarily is absolute. The same voice that we express could be heard different and resound different in every person. And I think that is the healing process. You can heal through art and you can provoke healing in others. Or others in you. Oh, you're right. We didn't talk, talk about that. The he healing through art, you're saying? 
yes, the, the part of the healing. Right. Oh, I think, well, these art projects, I mean, the art projects that she has in the book, because um, she, I think the way that I that she sets up the chapters in this book, I think create get you to reflect on things before and during you create. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what the healing process is. Is a lot of times is that these exercises she has before you do the artwork. Um, uh -huh promotes the healing but somehow i think doing your artwork is healing in itself too yes yes i think that we have the opportunity to see a lot of people doing art in uh, live stream in videos uh, and we have a unique opportunity that uh, for instance my parent my parents didn't have or my father didn't have and uh, so sometimes things that others do provokes something in me and they didn't intend that i'm sure but it does so for me it's very important to do art whenever I want, whenever I can. I have the opportunity. I had um, today. I went to to give my class, but they had another activity, and I I knew that it was the possibility of that. So I don't. Uh, I didn't. Um, this bothered me when I went and I assist with the other uh, activity. But I learned a lot. Even though I didn't do whatever I have in mind. And I didn't give a class, organized class, but in my assistance, I did help them to understand things and I help myself to understand other things. So that I think it's the healing part of all of this. We have a storm here now. I oh, don't understand the weather. Really don't. Thunders and all. Oh, you have thunder too? Yeah. Well, we've been getting a lot. We get a lot of rain here since since De November or December, we actually, the whole country has been getting a lot of precipitation, whether it's snow or rain, the, the whole country. Oh, even the desert in Arizona got flooded. Whoa. So we just get, this whole country has been getting, or either certain parts of the country, or most of, part, most of the country has been getting tons of precipitation since last November. Hmm. Kim says, oh, okay, I agree, Anina. Each person has their own strengths and foibles. You are still here, Kim. I have been in and out. I just Marvel rolled 14 papers and did two vinyl heat transfer for T-shirts. Wow, you've been busy, girl. Oh. I have something in my happen to you in general, Diane and you in the chat, that you cannot relate with something that you are seeing the others are doing. I am talking about art, but could be any subject. So what's the question? If happened to you 
that you cannot relate to a particular art uh, activity that others do, uh, words, thoughts, whatever. That you are in a situation that you said, okay, I try, but I cannot relate with that. The art you're talking about art specifically also <laughs> but let's talk about art let's say that you are watching me streaming and i start to do some miniature figures and you are not in that that's right with my vision i don't like doing miniature things yes my, my vision disability i don't like doing miniature art no you are in the chat because you love me and you need to, you, you want to to be in that moment and see what i am doing but you cannot enjoy it or relate it with it because you it's not your scene right so let's see jelly printing is not really my thing and i see a lot of people doing jelly printing Yes, I, I do have the materials for it, but it's, I don't. But I just, um, I kind of like it. But it, I kind of like it, but I don't like it as much, as well as other people really love it. Yeah. So Kim said, I can relate to others doing art. I'm not a fan of some kind of art, but I can appreciate all the work that is involved. Yeah. Perfect. You see. We, are, we, we love the others and we accept the others, even though it's not what we are, what we do. Well, that's important, very. Okay, let's start with the acrylic a little bit. You see? I have a glue, a hot gun now. Hot air gun. Bye bye to the hair dryer. Because you have a what? Hot air a gun? Hot air gun. Here. I don't, I, 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 I never heard of that. Oh, it's like a hair dryer, but with less air. <laughs> ah, okay. Diane, I gel print, but I only want the texture, not the impressive prints people make because I chop them up for bits. Here you oh. go. Mamma me. Oh, caramel is in with a panic attack. Oh, my dear. Okay, okay, okay. She's trembling. Oh, poor doggy. Because of the storm. Oh, because of the thunder. Yeah. So she's seeking for help, but I cannot help her now. Oh, Pat says she is totally, she totally is brain dead when it comes to understanding or like when it comes to abstract art. Oh. Well, yeah. I think you probably mean the abstract art that is uh, called non-objective abstract art. That's when it's just all, all shapes, colors, no, no, and patterns, no, no. textures, and nothing representational is in it. That's called, maybe that's the kind of abstract art you're talking about. I'm in the Sorry, we have a situation here. We have a situation. Could be. You know, I am in searching of my style. I'm not sure, but I did uh, reorganize my started to reorganize my 
my studio, then I found that I have a lot of things because I am a multi-talented artist. I do everything. Everything I can, I do. But yeah, I both three dimension, you do both three-dimensional and two-dimensional art. Yes. And I do painting and I do... Sculpture. Everything. Let's say everything. It's it's a... Mask sculpture. making. You do mask making. Yes, yes. And I do printing and whatever I I am attracted to. And I do jewelry and whatever I am attracted to, I do. So I now in a place that I want to hear myself and see what I want to do. And I think that by get rid of some things, of course, I, I, I will never get rid of a tool, but supplies like I am starting to cool off, let's say, and see myself with other eyes. So I don't know what will happen with that, but I sense that I am going to have changes in my approach. Oh, okay. I sense it. I can sense it. I don't know why. I know when. <laughs> but it's what I sense. So, yeah. Oh, it's almost time mm -hmm. to stop. <laughs> what? Sorry. That... It's almost time to stop. We only have like seven minutes left. Oh. Well, I think it was uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. I find it interesting, at least. Yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting to hear your different viewpoint on the inner critic. I thought that was interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My, as I say, my type James. Your what? Pipe dreams. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I am aware that this is a line span, but in color. I don't know. It's a, a little bit wet for them, the surface, but I don't want to. No, I'm not going to use them until it is dry. So I'm going to put my flowers in. Yeah. Fíjate en mi pieza. Sorry, we need to shut to, to shut every window because of the rain. It was yeah. unexpected because uh, and we the, don't have rain in this time of How the often year. do you get rain? Because you're in the desert, right? Yes, we have rain only in the winter. So yes, this is uncom uncommon for you to have rain this time of year? Yes, yes, it's uncommon. Oh. But everything could be possible.
Are you, are you still there? Oh, uh, can we still hear? Can we? I'm not sure we can still hear you. Can, can you say something, Miriam? Oh, if, I think we lost your audio. I don't hear Miriam. That we're about the end of our live stream anyway. Yeah, she's having a storms where she is. So So uh, we don't we don't hear you, Miriam. So no, thank you. Yeah, now I can hear you. Oh, not that great. You sound like you're far. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Oh, and talk oh now I can hear now you. I hear. Bye. Thank you so much for you. joining us today for talking about healing through art, understanding the inner critic. Yes. Now, now I have audio team. That yes. Now we can hear you. Yes, I muted my iPhone on purpose so it wasn't be an echo. So now I need it because the only thing I have is my phone connection. I don't have Wi-Fi because of the storm. Oh, so okay. just on time. Just Bye, everybody. Just on time. Just in time here for her to say goodbye. So far. So far. Here it is. <laughs> and I'm going to continue working in that and I will post a picture, but not today. Don't expect it today. Thank you so much to all of you that were in this stream and join us. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Miriam. And bye. Bye.